So last week we learned about how to describe a data set by using a few parameters, for example, mean and standard deviations. So after we calculate the parameters, we can use the parameter to calculate the frequency. But before that, you have to understand about the normal distribution and also standard normal curve. So after this lecture, you will be able to explain normal distribution. What does it mean when data is normally distributed? And also explain what is a standard normal curve. So there will be a standard normal curve you're going to use to estimate the probability. And then you should know how to calculate proportion of a normal distribution. So you can calculate the proportion or the probability by using standard normal curve. So there are two parts of the lectures. First is the normal distributions. So the characteristic of a normal distribution. Then after that, we'll discuss the importance of the standard normal curve, then how you can use it to calculate the proportions. Normal distribution, as we discussed before, is the distribution that show the bell shape. So for example, if you assemble 10,000 students from a population, and for each student, you measure the body height, then after that, you just plot all the data, then you will get the empirical distribution of your data. So as we learned in the previous lecture, we can use mean and standard deviation to describe or characterize a population. So we can describe the center tendency and also the measure of dispersion. The distribution of scale data is usually observed to largely concentrate around the mean. So this is what you see. So a lot of data is concentrated around the mean at the center and progressively fewer observation towards the extreme of the range value. So to work each of these extreme of the value from the mean, there will be fewer observation. So for a normal curve or the data that is normally distributed, they have a few characteristics. Distribution curve, you have a bell shape. Okay. And most of the score fall near center. So you can see most of the data near center and fewer at the extreme. And one of the most important characteristics of the normal curve is that it is symmetry. Okay, it is symmetry. So the left and the right have the same amount of observations. Okay. So in this case, in terms of the probability, it's 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. So 50% of the observation will be on the right side of the positive side of the mean, another one at the left side of the mean. And there's no skewness. Okay. So the pit is centered at the mean. The skewness zero and also the mean median and mood are the same so mean should be here and the medium is here okay because there is a symmetry curve and also mood also at the center so all the mean medium mood you have a same value so if the mean is 165 then the medium will be 165 as well and also the mood. However, the dispersion can change. So the dispersion can change a bit. But all in all, so these are the important characteristics of a normal curve. So regardless of what type of the data that you collected, as long as it's a scale data and it's a large amount of data, more likely when you plot the distribution curve, you will get a normal curve with this characteristic. However, not all bell shapes are normal. So there is a mathematical, mathematical definition of the theoretical normal curve. So as any curve, okay, there will be a formula that defines this curve. So for a theoretical normal curve, this is the formula. Okay, so this is a mathematical definition. So you can see a few 
symbol that you are familiar. So we go through it one by one. So most obvious is you have the S. Okay, you have the constant. So this is a constant value, pi, and also exponential. Okay, so these are the fixed value. So you don't have to worry about. Then after that, we have the parameter, which is the mean and standard deviation. The standard deviation, mean, standard deviation or variance. Okay, so this value or these parameters is depend on your data set, depend on the observation. So as you can see, what is renamed is a S variable. So this is the value of the observations. So it's here. And also the reactive probability or density. Okay. So that means that given parameter value that we have calculated from the data set, for example, mean and standard deviation that we calculated from a data set, and we can estimate or we can estimate the probability given a variable value. So if you get the S value, we will get the Y value, which is the probability. So if the data is normally distributed, then we can assume that the this mathematical definition is also applied to our data set. So if there's a case, then we can use this mathematical definition to calculate the probability. This is an example that we have discussed just now. So now we have a few data set, okay, that show the different characteristics. So this is a student height from location A, location B, location D, and location E. So you can see each of these data set are different in terms of their parameter. So the B, D, E have the same mean. Okay, so the question is, what are the relationship between these different data sets? So you can use the symbol of equal, larger, or smaller than. Okay, just put it here. So you can just pause the video for one or two minutes and then just try yourself. So as you can see, all these three mean is the same. But this mean is smaller than the mean of the other three. Okay. And in terms of the variance, as you can see, these two variance is the same. Okay. And the variance of the or same deviation of the location D is much larger than B. And also the location E, the same deviation is larger than D and B and A. So as you can see, all these distribution are normally distributed. Okay. So all so you can, as you can see, all these data have a normal distribution. Okay. So they mean that they have a same mathematical definition, but their mean and also the same division can be different. As what we have discussed in the previous slide. If the data is normally distributed, then we can calculate the probability associated with a variable value under the probability distribution. So given the non-standard deviation and also the mean, we can calculate. We also can calculate not only a variable value, but a range of the value. Okay, that represent by the area under the extreme value of the range. Okay, so we can estimate the range of the value. So we need to estimate the area under the curve. Okay, so what we can calculate, we can calculate the, the probability of the first value, okay, as one and then minus to the second value. Okay, so we're going to demonstrate this later. So for the first one, what we call the point estimate, and this is the range estimate. So to calculate the area is not that straightforward. So we have the mathematical definition 
for the normal curve. So if you want to calculate the area, then we need to do a very complex calculation to calculate the area. So this is not an easy way to do it. So that's the reason why we will not use this, use this mathematical definition as it is to calculate the point estimate or the probability. So one way to do it is to refer to a standard normal curve, which we'll discuss in the next video.